The Bronco Prime is definitely a forgotten weapon by most Tenno, but this definitely has its own unique flair and aesthetic. I'm just a little bit bummed that they didn't went for the Ack Bronco Incarnate, well at least not just yet. Hey guys, welcome back. As always, my name is Lazar, and today we're gonna be diving deeper into the Incarnate Bronco. I'm gonna have an endgame setup for you, one that is capable of taking on high level content. This is not exactly a new player friendly build simply because these Incarnate weapons are not easily obtained by newer players. That said, though, we are gonna be going through everything you need to know what evolutions to pick, how a build would look like, what kind of options you got. So, with that out of the way, let's jump into the Incarnate Bronco. Let's begin by having a quick look at how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of our regular free shots. The Bronco Prime is a classic and old school secondary weapon with a hit scan attack. Unfortunately, this one kicks like a bloody mule. In essence, this is a secondary shotgun. But for secondary weapons, you don't get dedicated shotgun mods like you do for primaries. As soon as you install your incarnate adapter, your crosshairs will change. And as soon as you go aim mode, it changes configuration. And you also get a loading bar right underneath it. The more headshots you get... The more pellets you put into enemies' heads, the better the charge on that loading bar. With any charge whatsoever, you can go incarnate form. And in incarnate form, it changes appearance slightly, gaining some additional details. Now, the beauty about this one, it gains instant link to additional targets. Take a look at this. The range on the link is approximately 8 meters and the maximum number hit is 4? five including the initial target now keep in mind this is not a chain ability so it can chain to this and then chain to this essentially everything gets insta linked to the initial target and there is no damage drop off between the actual link so you're going to be getting yourself full damage there is no headshot multi so if the initial target gets headshotted and you get the headshot multi the additional targets will not be getting headshotted nor will they benefit from that additional damage there is drop off however weirdly enough this weapon is hit scan but it does have damage drop off so you're gonna be careful about how close you are to your actual target and of course some projectile flight speed is going to be helping with that you get drop off both in normal mode and in incarnate form as well the first evolution essentially enables the transformation so forget about this one at level two is your first choice you got a choice between speeding bullet an infused shot. Speeding bullet does the following. Increases damage by 30, that is a base amount. With sprint speed 1.2 or higher, 60% projectile speed. That is fantastic because once again, it's gonna help with fall off. Not only in the normal form, but in the incarnate form as well. Take a look right here at my fall off. 14.4 to 28.2 if i change it it goes from 9 to 18 and this will be applying in the incarnate form as well but it should be said that the incarnate form has much better drop off by default with no modification 18 meters full damage which is pretty good but if your spread is horrendous this isn't really gonna help you all that much infused shots does the following increase damage by 16 instead of 30 on 50 energy spent increases damage by plus time for 10 seconds and this one is going to be stacking up to 36 or four times so if you put the two together that's a whole lot of damage you're looking at 52 damage instead of 30 the problem is what kind of warframe you're going to be using obviously this one is warframe dependent if you got a spammy warframe you're going to be going with infused shots if not you're going to go with speeding bullet now getting 1.2 sprint speed is not all that hard usually just need one ability or one mod on the warframe that said currently this talent is bugged in the sense that its activation is perma on it doesn't matter what kind of sprint speed you have Below 1.2, over 1.2, you're still retaining all of the benefits, the damage and the projectile flight speed. So for the time being, we're gonna go with speeding bullet. Level 3 is the usability tree, and keep in mind the usability issues of the weapon. We got a nasty spread, we got a pretty ugly recoil, not only that, the magazine size is small when it comes to the normal form and the really low time is lengthy at 2 seconds considering the magazine of 4, so we got plenty of usability issues on the Bronco. You have the following options, reduce the recoil by 50%, not bad, yes this will apply in both forms, practice grip increases accuracy by 30% and in gameplay I found this one to be the best coupled with another accuracy mod, namely targeting subsystems in the Excel slot and finally you're getting extended volley, increases magazine capacity by 2, which is a joke. Essentially, it's a joke simply because the magazine size is 4, it goes to 6. This wouldn't be an issue if this was the Ack Bronco, that one has a magazine of 8. Honestly, 
stay away from this one you're going to be looking at practice grip or kinetic battle practice grip i still think is best in slot because then most of your pellets are going to be landing roughly within the crosshairs if you're going to be getting targeting subsystems in the excel slot as well then all of them are landing within the crosshairs it becomes a whole lot more accurate which means i can actually get to use that fantastic fall off starting at 28.8 meters this is a highly subjective tree as it portrays the usability if you prefer to go for minus recoil and simply mod for accuracy or vice versa so you can tackle both of the problems but not really fully solve either you can go with kinetic battle and the final one evolution 4 you got this one which is fantastic commodore's fortune increases critical chance by 20 percent that is a base amount yes it sends your critical chance from 24 to 44 as you can see now the other one two multi shot and you're gonna say ah doesn't matter it's base multi-shot that means you're going from seven pellets by default to nine pellets by default on all of your mods all of the multi-shot that you slap on the weapon are going to be bouncing off of rain of lead it's not a bad talent it's a good talent i just simply found commodore's fortune to be a bit more fun because hey pretty numbers on the screen as for enough for everyone 80 percent ammo efficiency when six enemies are within six meters it's a bit iffy because you need at least six enemies. It's a bit iffy because you need six meters. Not only that, the 80% ammo efficiency, while fantastic, it only works in its normal form, so forget about it for now. Go for Commodore's Fortune. As for a build itself, in case you're newer to the game and you came across the Bronco Prime, listen this is not a fantastic weapon for a new player it's simply not it's great or good when you get yourself the incarnate adapter but until that point this is really not a weapon i would recommend if you want to see something that's really fantastic for newer players link the cards right now as for incarnate user you're looking at something like this galvanized diffusion is going to be a no-brainer and we're also going to be using dizzying rounds together with hemorrhage now dizzying rounds offers you 200 percent status chance that is the main appeal but a bit of crowd control as well shots from less than 8 meters stun enemies and open them up to finishers considering the drop off that we have now that starts at 28 meters without any additional pfs honestly we're not really going to be using that one it's not important i want that 200 percent status chance you know why my status chance goes from 77 something percent to 128.6 per projectile that means a single projectile can apply multiple status effects that's what happens when your status chance goes over 100 hemorrhage is going to be adding a whole lot of slash to my target because my fire rate right now if you take a look is at 2 for because instead of prime pistol gambit we're going to be using creeping bullseye and that minus 20 percent fire rate essentially means that it lowers the fire rate from 3 to 2.4 basically they thought of this one that we're going to be using creeping bullseye this is definitely the way to go critical chance is going to be 132 with a 6.7 x critical multiplier with prime target cracker galvanized shot works a treat it's definitely a no brainer did i mention the two 60 60 viral mods as per the usual now there is one thing that I did want to point out but totally forgot and I just remembered now while editing the vid. Here's a thing that you can do. It's an old veteran trick. You can get a pair of 6060 mods and not rank them up. That's going to mean the following. Lower status chance, lower damage, but it's also going to mean a much lower proc priority for vital. You don't need a million vital procs, which makes room for more, yes, slash procs. Now keep in mind that it is a trade-off, you're not getting something for nothing, you are sacrificing status chance and damage, however, it is an option worth exploring. As for the Excel slot, this one would require me to form a one more time. The choice is yours. If you prefer the accuracy, which is what I recommend, go for targeting subsystems. If not, you can reduce the recoil with something like Steady Hands. You can increase the PFS by putting Lethal Momentum on there, but honestly, you already got 28 meters. It's fine as it is. And besides, without accuracy, that drop-off or fall-off isn't really gonna do you much good. Corrupted heavy goons, we're gonna go for headshots. This is what the weapon can do on its own two feet without it going incarnate mode. Weirdly enough, it does take a couple of shots, three to four shots, depending on the multi shot, to actually get a full charge. On its own two feet is not all that fantastic, but as soon as you switch, my friends, look at this. And it wasn't even stacked just yet. Essentially, the damage is getting linked to additional targets, and they are absolutely getting shredded by the vital procs and the slash procs as well. Beautifully, beautifully.
I don't need to open up. If I want to, I can. That is a semi-automatic weapon, but two shots are more than enough to take out these high-level targets. This is the kind of performance you can expect out of the weapon. Now, you can crank it up even further because the ribbon disposition on this puppy is 5 out of 5. Nobody plays with the Bronco anymore. Nobody. So, basically, you got max ribbon disposition. Rivens for this one are still not all that expensive, so you can try and get one. Priority is going to be multi-shot and critical damage. That said, let's talk about other options regarding the build let's say you like bane mods if you want a bane mod prime expel corrupted is the only somewhat viable one if you're going to be going for steel path circuit because the fodder enemies that die easily anyway there are corrupted but the tougher enemies are frags and there's also some decks in there as well my recommendation forget about faction mods for the time being but if you want to swap this one in what are you going to give up on you can make vital on your secondary weapon and then hope you actually get it in Steel Path Circuit or just go Steel Path Normal or rely on the Panzer Vulpophila because you can't really drop anything from this. What are you gonna drop? Galvanized Shot? Not that smart of an idea. This is your source of flat damage together with Primary Merciless. You might consider dropping Dizzying Rounds but again you're really sacrificing a lot. Take a look at this. It drops your status chance from 128 goes to 77. It's not really that great of an idea but you just might not have Dizzying Rounds. In which case as stated before your options are more flat damage torrent strike lethal torrent which is still my favorite or a faction mod now let's head on over to the path of steel welcome to the void my friends now with me is the panzer vulpophila so we're gonna go straight for level 112 what is that 12 20 something like that steel path enemies the weapon is uncharged i got no stacks of anything right now i'm just gonna show you a full run so you can see exactly what kind of performance you can expect out of this one of course as soon as you go in card and form the weapon absolutely shreds whatever stands before it and it will keep on shredding up until well honestly levels in the thousands i love the insta link right the insta link is the main feature essentially it's hit scan damage on a whole group of enemies if you got a clump up ability something like a nidus or a Korra or even a booban you're gonna love this link ability it's absolutely fantastic the only thing that it doesn't do it doesn't carry over the headshot multiplier i guess that would have been a little bit too strong but still it would encourage players to go for headshots which i'm definitely for Get a couple of shots, get a little bit of charge there, just go incarnate form afterwards. You don't need it to be fully maxed out and it's incarnate charge, you can just go like so. Again, the damage is fantastic, I am getting one shots consistently now that the weapon is fully stacked. But another good question would be, okay, fine, it kills everything in Steel Path at this level, but what about an Acolyte? What if an Acolyte shows up? What are we gonna do then? Kill it. What else? So we can get a better shot. Who is that? Violence. Is violence the one with the bubble? I always fear the guy with the bubble. The guy with the bubble kills me. Okay, that was a shot. Stop running. How can I hit you if I'm... What? What just happened? Yeah, that was a shot. Stop running. How can I hit you if I'm... Alright guys, let's try that one more time. This time Misery is showing up. Alright, I'm just gonna save myself for it. I'll wait for you down here. Come here. There you go. That's Misery. I'm gonna shoot it in the head. That's the kind of damage you can expect out of the weapon. I had like half a charge when we started fighting. I gotta charge it again. There you go. A couple of headshots. Wow, look at all the look at all the vital procs on him. It's not bad. It's not bad, but it's definitely not fantastic now, is it? Wait, are you gonna bug off again? Please don't bug off again. There you go, finally killed it. Not a fantastic showing from the weapon. And that is pretty much gonna do it. The brand new Incarnate Bronco is an absolutely fantastic weapon and I love this link mechanic. This insta link mechanic hit scan damage basically on a group. It's gonna work really well if you're gonna be playing with a clump up ability. The damage is good, the procs are good, it's a fantastic secondary weapon that can run with the best of them. But there is one brand new Incarnate weapon that beats this one really badly. Wanna see which it is? Look at the cards right now. 
As always, my name is Ben Lazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe only if you enjoy the content. If you got any feedback for me, I would love to read it in the comment section down below. Also in the comment section down below, if you want to suggest any particular weapon build. Like, for example, I would like to see this weapon build or that weapon build and so on and so forth. You can also catch me live on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. Oh, and if you love the content and you want to help me keep making it, consider supporting us via Patreon. There's going to be a link in the upper right portion of the screen right about now.